Hey, good morning, everyone. It's really a great uh, pleasure for me to be here to uh, present again. Last year, I will be here uh, to talking about our open source project, the Apache Kylie, and the user cases, and a lot of uh, uh, you know, great uh, ideas from there. And this year, I would like to talk another uh, I, uh, topic, we'll call it uh, Simplify Data Analytics Over the Cloud. I will introduce how our innovation is, how our idea is, and uh, what kind of uh, you know, innovation can help you to simplify your analytics, can please your life. Okay. My name is uh, Luke Han, like I said. I'm a co-founder and a CEO at uh, Kelly Jeans, and also the creator and uh, a former PMC chair of Apache uh, Kelly, and also the SF member and uh, also the Microsoft uh, Regional Director. This is uh, a community law. It's not an employee of Microsoft. Okay. It's something like a Microsoft MVP. Okay. And uh, a little bit about uh, the background of our uh, startup. We call it uh, intelligence, meaning killing and intelligence. Well, inter took the inter, so we only can left bring the you know in, in legends, right? So we combine these two. We try wanted to leverage our you know open source project, the Apache Killing, and bring the intelligence capability over there. So this is a company. So our our mission is we call this AI augmented data warehouse because we we believe this industry, the data industry, is still very uh, in the older technology day, right? It still requires a lot of uh, human efforts. Something like you are still running a scripts maybe 10 years ago. You are using the technology maybe like 20 years ago, right? So this is what we try wanted to change the world. And we raised the uh, four, four, four rounds funding uh, from top VCs like Redpoint, like Cisco, like uh, Fidelity International, you know that, and all the Kotu. And we are run the exactly the same model as like uh, Spark, the DataBricks, and Electis. We have a global uh, open source community, and we offer our uh, commercial, commercial product uh, to run the business for our uh, customers. So this is, a, this is a thing uh, about the background, about our uh, company. And in the past three years, we, we got a lot of uh, great customers yeah, sorry about that. Most of them are Chinese with them, but most of them actually are global Fortune 500. Very big, and their use case is very amazing. Huge data over there, and the legacy technology already cannot serve for that today's requirements. So they switched from the old technology to us, or build something new over top of that. We are mainly focusing in the four like industries, uh, the financial services. Uh, for sure, for banks, insurance company, for the securities, and also like a, a, a net pay payment system, right? And also the manufacturing, like uh, General Motors Shanghai, like uh, uh, the Volkswagen uh, China, and also Posture. I like this car, right? <laughs> and also like uh, all the smartphones, like Vivo, like Huawei, Oppo, and the Xiaomi, yeah, for sure. And also we have a lot of in, uh, retail uh, customers from McDonald's to like uh, uh, Starbucks to KFC. Also uh, we will have other like a uh, coffee brand from UK very soon. Okay. And also we have a customer in U United States. We are talking about to the insurance company, the banks, and also the other great you know, financial uh, firms we will announce very soon. So this is the background in the past three years. We got the trust from those customers very well. So let's, let me talk about a little bit about our, the, the beginning of our story. So the beginning story is Apache Kylie, right? This is the open source project. In this year's data and AI landscape, you could see the Apache Kylie is placed into the framework of the, the entire landscape. The, as the same as the Hadoop, the Spark, the Young, the Mesos, the, even like uh, Kubernetes, right? It is an infrastructure, a framework for the, for the data itself. So this is uh, the open source pollution, okay? And yeah, this, uh, this landscape is actually published many years, uh, so you can check every year, every year over there. And this community is very great, so I will show two things. The first is like the GitHub stars, how many, in the past five years, you can see a lot of people like our, uh, you know, uh, open source project. But the Jira issues is actually the, the, the real, real world, right? So that means we we done a lot we, we develop a lot of bugs, <laughs> right? But this also means uh, a lot of customers or users are using this open source project, right? They need to 
to prepare like a, a fixed set of bugs and also bring some like new features. So you could see the open source community growth is very great. And I can give you another number, it's adoptions. Thousands of adoptions globally. So from very big names, even like Apple, Amazon, like Microsoft, like Yahoo Japan, like uh, uh, Cisco, like Walmart, like OLX in, 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 in Europe, right? And also a lot of uh, you know, giants in China from the very huge one, like the Baidu, like uh, Alibaba, like uh, uh, Tencent, and also like WeChat, and like uh, uh, QQ Music, a lot of them. Those, uh, those users have very huge data challenges. We always talking about uh, like uh, the hundreds, billions of loads of data. So in such like a uh, data, vo volume data, how you can uh, uh, bring the fast access to those data, how you can enable your analysts can, can get, get insights in seconds level. This is uh, the open source killing to resolve the problem, okay. And uh, yeah, this is a summarize where we position the uh, open source project, we see we are help our users to managing your golden data over the data lake. So everybody know, right, there's a garbage in, always garbage out. Then you stop like hundreds of terabyte, even like a terabyte data to your Hadoop cluster. But how about the valuable data, most valuable data where is, and how you manage that, how you can govern that. So this is coming from the open source project called Apache Kali, you know, and we developed the in five years ago in eBay, and we open source it. So we introduced the semantic layer over the data lake. So you can build a semantic layer for over the Hadoop side. And then you, it's not enough. This is a abstract layer, but not enough. The most, uh, uh, most uh, challenge is for performance. So we're using uh, MOLAP technology, that means pre-calculation. So we pull the data from source, say Hive, say like a Spa SQL, and we using the semantic layer because we already have the multi-dimensional da data model over there. So we calculated that, and even we can build the index over there. Right? So then we can store to like HDFS and something else. And next time when the same query coming, it not touch any like Hive or even uh, find any like MapReduce job. It will directly go to the result and back it in seconds level. So this is uh, the core concept. And the thing about that, you do not need to manage all the data in a data lake. Only you need to fix or focusing in like maybe 20% of those data. Because this, those 20% of the data can give you like 80% of the value, right? So that is a loop. And also, yeah, it is, today it supports uh, uh, streaming also. So we can consume data not only from uh, like a batch model, we also can support in, in the streaming model, can consume it from like say Kafka. And, uh, our latest version called Apache Kaling 3.0 is under uh, release now. We already released uh, two versions in the beta, and we'll release a uh, general available version in this year. We'll introduce real, real time. That means the time to insight will be reduced to like a second level, even like a million second level. It will something close to drilled. Okay. Okay. So this is uh, this is the concept behind that. But now I want to try to oh yeah. Before I'm talking about the cloud, I was talking one use case. So this is the China Unipay. So we helped the customer replace the IBM Kongonos application. Using two kilojoules cubes, replaced 1,200 cubes. It's not about the cubes, it is about ETL jobs. To generate those like thousands of cubes, you need thousands of jobs to producing that, right? Those overhead is very, very huge. But now, they only need one ETL job and can generate like a, 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 you know, two like cubes and exceed the limitation of the IBM Kongonos. Previous, they only can analyze no more than like 12 dimensions. Now they can bring hundreds of dimensions over there. And now they can bring like a much years data into one cube and, and, and the analysts can get those data in seconds. So this changed a lot. This is a gaming changing technology for them. So they, and they, were, they are very happy because they do not need to manage a, a, a very complicated application. Previously, they have like nine machines for the IBM Kongonos and plus uh, many, many you know, machines for the DB2 services. Now they only need one type of cluster is good enough. Okay, so this is a, a use case, okay. And everybody knows that data is a 
next oil, right? Everybody talking about that. Yeah. So another trend is data is moving to the cloud for sure, right? Everybody moving data to AWS, to Azure, to Google, to somewhere. The problem is all the same. I call it, we call it the chaos happens again. Well, think about that. Where's your data? Well, it will start in a different uh, database in the cloud, right? MySQL, like Postgres, Aurora, and uh, S3, maybe whatever, or maybe like uh, streaming. And your boss came into, came into you, said, one cloud vendor is so risky. So we need a much cloud strategy. That means you need redundancy. Oh my god. Then your data will be placing everywhere, right? One, maybe two cloud vendors is still not good enough. How about three? And how, how about copy your data? And how you can compound this data? And your business user, your analyst, will very pain for that because they cannot get a single source of truth for that data. And they have to learn different you know, technology. They have, they have to learn Java, they have to learn Scala, they have even like, hey, this is like a Python. And we give them a very fancy name, we call it a data scientist. Right. But it's actually missing. I will, first, we call it a, the intelligent semantic layer. Semantic layer is very important for the data, right? It is very old, how say, serious. But uh, many people like forgot that, but everybody is coming back in the past like two to three years. And it's very easy for high concurrency or for high performance. But how you can combine the high performance and high concurrency together in the cloud? How many concurrency of your red, red, uh, Redshift cluster? How many concurrency of your Snowflake Redshift? Think about that. I think that's a lot. And well, no more Hadoop on cloud. Hadoop is very, very great. Okay, it's a very, uh, it's a promising technology, and uh, can can handle like hundreds of petabytes data. It's very good for on-premise, but it's not good for in the cloud. The maintenance, the management, and the overhead is very, very heavy, right? And uh, I know the, I think the, you, you, you guys know the price of the cloud Hadoop, how much is, okay? If you want to store like say one terabyte in a cloud Hadoop, how much is, think about that. And another is automation. If you bring everything to the cloud, you want to automation. So this is a missing, missing part. And what kind of the benefits we can from the cloud? First is a cloud native, we call it. Cloud native is that mean you can put your data, that means the storage and the computing will separate it. And the storage will be very cheap. And the computing should be always like, how say, uh, provision on the fly to reduce the cost. And the second, we, that is, a, coming from the electrical siding, the scaling, right? So you do not need to uh, keep, all, keep, keep all your nodes running over the night. Actually, nobody access that. And another is a lower TCL. So while you bring the data to, bring your application and the data to cloud, always, always start from a TCL, right? But it's real. How much is you need to calculation? So we introduced our uh, KDGIS cloud, and this is the idea is we, can, we try want to simplify those things. So we know different data sets sitting in different storage, every, every cloud. Maybe you just don't have like a, a AWS, but you still store the data to a different data store, right? Say the database, say the files, say like a, even like streamings or, or, or something else. Right. And so what we try want to do is the first thing we try want to bring the semantic layer, so that means we bring the piece of data, piece of the data definition from different source. And then we can, we can build, a, a, we call it a multi-dimensional data model for the, for the user. So this is a, the first thing, we uni, uni, unify the data, uh, the multi-dimensional data model, the data view, right? And like the open source one, we, you, we unify Spark to processing all those things, and we will persistent those calculated result, the cubes, the index, and anything else to the cloud storage naturally. 
We do not start to HDFS anymore in the cloud. We directly start to S3, directly start to the Azure Browser Storage. So that will reduce a lot of overhead over there, right? And not good enough, we introduced the one thing we call it is AI augmented engine. So even if, even those, the, you know, the, the below two parts are great, but you still require people to uh, know about the data, know about the technology, have a, a skill set for like Scala, Spark, whatever, and also understand the business. But actually, you cannot find those people. Those people should be very expensive, right? So where, this is, a, we introduced, we call it AI augmentation engine to automatically to build those like data model. So I will introduce the, the detail later. Then, yeah, we participated for most of the you know, popular cloud vendors already from Azure, AWS, Google, and also Alibaba. And so then we can offer the SQL interface, the NC SQL interface to all the you know, consumers from BI tools, dashboard, the open source notebooks, and also the machine learnings. And even like, a, yeah, we put like a Tencent, Tencent Flow, we can speed up for the data preparation, or also kind of to serving for a huge you know, data consuming from our side. And also I put a WeChat. So we also can enable the WeChat application can interact with your cloud data. Okay, it's very easy. So this is the architecture uh, of our cloud. This is the, our mission wanted to simplify the data analytics over the cloud. So let me talk about the detail. So the first, uh, we call it is a uh, Spark Natio. So now, our latest version of the cloud, uh, KDG's cloud, we reduce the Hadoop overhead in the cloud. We read the data, we build the cube and the index, we store the data, and even we're serving for the queries, all is relying on Spark. No Hadoop, no MapReduce, right? No Young, okay, and nothing. Okay, only like the natural you know, Spark and also the cloud. So it's, this is a very simple. It can bring a very great, uh, how say, uh, uh, I can give you an example. So now you can provision one cluster in several minutes. For example, in like AWS, it can uh, definitely can less than like five minutes can give you a cluster, right? In actually a little bit like longer, but uh, still around like five minutes. Compare our previous version, our own version. The comp previous version is a dependent, it's, it's relying on Hadoop like the EMI or HD Insight, it will take like 30 minutes at least to provision the cluster. And the overhead is really, really huge because you know, when you provision a Hadoop cluster, it will provision Young, provision like a Zookeeper, provision like a you know, MapReduce, provision a lot of things, right? Even, and if you want to use it like Hive, oh my God, you still have services, like the Hive metadata services, a lot, a lot of services are overhead over there. But now you do not need that. You just need a, a cloud storage and our nodes. It's good enough. Okay. So the second is, we call it is a semantic layer. I'm, I'm, I'm putting like my more than 20 years in the data warehouse domain. So we know the to govern the data, to manage your data, the key is you build a you know, unified semantic layer first. And to unify it across your organization. So one, one of my customers called the China Construction Bank came to us. They, put, they, they spent about more than like 10 years to do one thing, to, to make sure every KPI, every matrix, the definition is the same across the organization, right? So when you are mentioning, hey, this is like a GMV, so everybody should talk in the same language, the same definition. And you should have one single source choose to find that data, that matrix. So this is what we call is the, the, the semantic layer, right? And we also can, you know, to serving for very complicated, we call it calculated matrix or even like dimensions. So you have the source data and your analysts always will serving for the business and they always want to have some matrix on the fry. So they should not ask people to, you know, bring those like metrics into the source data and uh, processing everything. They should do on the fly, right? Just something like uh, when they are using Excel, it's very easy to put an expression over there. So we support those also like we call it a computed column, you know, the calculation column over there. 
Yeah, so can, you can see that's very complicated. You can put, this is like exchange rate, a lot of, of like the uh, case one, or you can put like a year to D, year, year to day, or something else, right? Okay, so this is a semantic layer, okay? And uh, how between us and also like the, like the, we call it the cloud data warehouse, because they also had, so we, we try wanted to build those semantic layer and also the overlap over the cloud data warehouse. So from the sourcing, it's very easy and using like the cloud, uh, uh, you know, data warehouse, say like a Redshift, Snowflake, or even like a S3, it's very great to using those tools to land in data, to transform, each, transform the data. They are, in this domain, they are very great, especially for like the MPP uh, technology. You can write very complicated uh, cycles to do the transformation, to do the clean up, right? We cannot handle that. They, they, are, they, are, they are very good at that. But we can help those way is we can build the aggregated or and the index over that and also the same layer, uh, sem semantic layer. We can serve in very high concurrency. We can guarantee for the uh, SQL response time and we store all the data you know, to the like, cloud version, uh, cloud storage. So this is a position, and we can serve in for the Excel for the, for the, for the table. So yeah, if you only have like say hundreds of records, well, do not, do not use us, it's overhead for you. But if you have like millions of records, definitely we will have a lot. But not only for the like big data, we also can serve in for the middle size, even like a small data size. When, if, when you want to have a semantic layer for that one, right? it's very easy to, to use. You can very easy to introduce those two to, the, uh, to your analysts. We call those analysts actually unsatisfied over the past decade because everybody wanted those people to be a scientist, to be a programmer, but they actually only like SQL and Excel, right? They don't like programming. So this is what we try wanted to build the, bring our add value to the cloud data warehouse. So let me show, a, let me just show a demo. So this is a demo how we can pull it from a Snowflake and build a semantic level over that. Okay, so yeah, just a little bit. So you can see, this is, a, we load the data to the Snowflake. It is a MPP data, right? And then we can, you know, native connect to the, to the Snowflake and we just put the, the uh, credential over there and we can pull all the metadata back. And then we can uh, build the semantic layer. You can see the semantic layer for the Snowflake. Okay, it's very easy. You can see it can build the. This is a star schema, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and this one I will talk about later. We not only can serve for the uh, snow. Yeah, this is a complicated, you know, a calculation column. Okay, so you can build this one, and you can serve in for the visualization very well using our built-in uh, engine. This is a very we call it the Azure uh, BI tools, uh, Azure BI tool, and also can kind of serve in for Excel or some. Other like a commercial biatos, I can I will skip over this. So this is a, you can see it's, it's, it's very good. Well, help you to build the semantic layer. You can uh, uh, build the cube to speed up for the queries. Build also like see the index. But like li like I mentioned before, how you how many people you need to do that right? So I can tell one another story. The very interesting is I have a very one of my greater uh, you know friend. He is uh, in a uh, uh, San Jose. He's very exciting. Last year, came to me that hey, I bought a Tesla Model Three, and he invited me to you know just over there, and he showed me how to autopilot, boom, and nothing touched right, <laughs> and it's very fancy. Oh my God, it's from the future. And uh, I asked him another question. One question is, what happened when you driving to the office, you know, using your Tesla? Model 3. What will happen when you open up your laptop? The problem, okay. So the, the car industry already changed, autopilot, even like a, those Tesla, you know, factory, that's a, actually very, no, no human over there, right? And only like several like managers over there. So that's the problem is coming to, coming to this question. So actually the reality is, is this. 
So I just、uh, told my friend is the only thing you change is you have a fancy Mac laptop, but your script is still ten years ago. The ETL jobs, the SQLs, the databases, right? That's、uh, many many years ago. So you cannot do that at at a scale when your business business growing. So yeah, I'm from China. So the economic growth, development is very good, and a lot of a lot of you know business is growing very fast over there. How you can find skilled people over there? You cannot, right? Because the, the business it will close exponentially, but the people producing cannot. Right, so you cannot find those. So so only way is automation. So this is what we believe. We believe the automation is the key, and this is com also coming from the Gartner. You know, from last year they said the augmented analytics is the future of the data and analytics. How we bring those ideas to the product? Actually, we released our first, uh, uh, how say,、uh, augmented analytics capability. It's about like one and a half year ago, more before Gartner released that report. Okay. But at that moment, we just call it like the auto modeling. So think about that. In a bigger organization, everybody are consuming those data. You already have like a lot of like、uh, reports and、uh, and and、uh, analytical system. So actually, those things, those like behaviors, logs already be tracked. So something like you when you go to like Amazon, when you go to eBay, when when you do some like a search. Or buy, and it will recommend something to you, right? Because they know what what kind of、uh, because, for example, you buy a car, and next time you go to like eBay, it it will if if eBay know that, he will recommend hey you maybe buy something for this car, right? This is we call the recommend system. It's very good for the commercial side, but what happened for the enterprise side? Actually, your boss, right? Your business system, a、uh, business users. Only care a, a little bit like metrics or data, so those things actually happen over there, and actually we can using those we can to learn from the you know history, and to automatically identify the we call the most valuable data. For example, we don't hold data, and also we can know what is the cold data. For example, like one of my one of my customer. They said they produce more than ten thousand reports every year, but nobody dare to say, "Hey, those reports should be like deleted." But now we know because that's the usage. Because we know the the the, the you know weight of the like、uh, customers, right? So you know that that you can help that, and we can continually learning from the system for that one. Okay, so that is the、uh, the algorithm behind of that. So we can import the SQLs from, like, say, or from your Oracle, from your Green Plum, from your Hive, and also we can we have a push down、uh, capability. We call it smart push down. At the beginning, if we, if there's no history for you, we actually can plug it to your application and just let your user to use that. More and more usage, more and more logs we have, and more and more you know data set we know. You know, for example. At the beginning, you say, "Hey, we I want to build a, like ten dimensions、uh, data model for you," and you just ship it to your、uh, users. And actually, they only care about like see, there's three like dimensions and another like five metrics. After like several months, and you collect a lot of logs, the system can recommend you, "Hey, here is a better way to reduce like those data," or it can help to identify, "Hey, here is another hot data set." But those data set, the, du the SQL duration is still very long. Say like ten min, ten seconds, or maybe minutes. And the system will recommend you, hey, do you want to speed up for that? If yes, just click one button. It's good enough. Okay. So yeah, and this is we call it a rule-based engine. So you can define the rule. That means the rule is we will because you know we can、uh, we will collect all the SQLs and and use the machine learning to analyze those data. So we can find say between like.、Uh, Or, or like greater than like a three、uh, seconds cycles, we wanted to speed up. Or one of my customer from the China Machines Bank said, every you know cycles, my big boss touched, we have to ensure it will be speed、uh, speed up, right? Something like that. Then you can define those rules inside inside our platform. Okay, and let me show a demo. <coughs> 
okay. So those sequels we capture from the, the system, okay. It may uh, import it, okay. And we can accelerate it, and this there, there's a there's a loop behind of that, okay. And after those, you know, uh, accelerated, and you can directly drag and drop from your any like BI tools. It's very fast. For example, yeah, previous uh, a, a Tableau and a Green Prom, you know, combination, it was very slow, and we plug over there. And just run, run one time, generate all the sequels, and we can accelerate it automatically. Okay. So the, yeah, this is also happening in the cloud. So now let me talk about uh, another topic is uh, for the high concurrency. So that's good. Looks like good. And you resolve the storage. You resolve the, the like uh, human efforts. And uh, when you bring your data to the cloud, you definitely want to serve thousands of users all over the world, right? But if you are using one MPP technology, it cannot. Okay, one class only can serve a very low you know, concurrency number. So how you can do that? One, one guy said, you need a, another cluster. You need another cluster. But it's, it's not, actually, it's not scale. So what we can scale? So we store the data, generate the data, cubes the index and all the low data to the S3 to like proper storage to like a, a Google Cloud, okay, and we provision our we call it a computing node on top of that. So, for example, in the night you do not need there are two parts, okay. The first is we call it a building. That means we will processing the data, right? And when you the when your data peak time is coming, we can uh, uh, extend the cluster very well, and uh, using the most you know. Available resource to build that like cubes and index, and after that the workload is is, is done and we will residing back. Right, this is the first part. The second part is for the serving for the query side. So for example, when the, at at the beginning that you just only need like say one node to alive, it's a small node to alive to serving like in nights. But for example, Black Friday will come in. Right, how many people will go over there? So in that case, you actually can provision a very huge data, you know, uh, uh, nodes. But you do not need to copy any data. You do not need to, you know, uh, provision different cluster with the data, right? So that is a, that is the same same thing called we call it a high concurrency. Okay, our our test result is very good. Okay, and yeah, this is we call it a elastic scaling. Okay, so. It will handle the peak time. You know, when your data is coming, for example, most of the data is coming actually as, as a batch in nights. Okay, in the night, so it can handle that, and our system can monitor the usage of that, and we we have some rules to expand the you know cluster. Yeah, but within all your all your, all your quota quota. Okay, so and also we can using like say the spot instance to reduce all your like uh, total cost. And another one is very important is for the security. When you bring the data to, to there, you do not want to, you know, to generate one data set for German, one data set for Spain, one data set for like England, right? You want to, you want to just one data set, but apply a very good like a, a SEL on top of that, and we can support this. And as a result, we can support it called cell level SEL, so you can grind it over there. And also, we support the SDK. You can to uh, combine those things to the to your own application. Okay. And yeah, Excel always. It's very easy. You want you just download you download the ODBC driver and it can connect to the to the to the server over there. And uh, by the way, like uh, Power BI uh, from last year, Power BI embedded our connector from their uh, release. So if you're using like Power Power BI desktop, you can find a Kitchens connector. Inside there, yeah, it's very it's very good experience if you use that. Yeah, also like a Tableau, also like a Click, and also other like a, you know BI tools. And uh, yeah, one thing very interesting we call it the WeChat application. I'm not sure how many people are using you know WeChat or see here, right? So everybody wanted to enable their boss to access those data to corroborate the data from mobile. But if you need a, a iOS or like Android developer, it will not happen. Well, it's too complicated. Now we actually can uh, have those things. Is you just need to build your reports, and we have a, a we call it a Kitchens Insight Plus. It can help you to push, uh, publish your data to your like WeChat, 
and you know WeChat is something like we or WhatsApp or, or like a, a Facebook or message. You can very easily to collaborate between the teams, right? So this is a very interesting way. Yeah, you do not need to find. There, there's a, no need for any like uh, iOS development, or you do not need to do any like coding. You just need to find someone analyst can do this way. Okay. Yeah, I want to show last. I want to show the, uh, a use case. Uh, this is actually one of the largest uh, Microsoft uh, uh, SQL Server analytics services, and we migrated these things from uh, uh, on-premise to Azure. Okay, still to Azure. Okay, and. Uh, the previous version, they put a, a very complicated architecture because the limitations they have, so they have to build hundreds of different cubes. They have a one main cube and like hundreds of sub-cubes and using a very complicated application to manage over those. Uh, and when they are refresh those data, you know, the, the, it, it cannot serve for the queries. So this is the biggest uh, you know, finance uh, services in the United States. Okay, and we we successfully replaced this. Okay, and so the last slides I would like to see the takeaway. So we introduced the the uh, semantic layer. We are using our AI augmented engine to simplify everything over there, and uh, is Spark native and Cloud native. So yeah, and also we can h help you to have the high concurrency but very lower TCO. Okay, you can go to our uh, boss out of there. We will have uh, uh, people over there, and we have uh, our partner, uh, uh, Kimi. Uh, they will introduce a telecom in, uh, a demo over there. And also, we have uh, people, uh, Yuli will be over there. Uh, we probably will have a workshop uh, over there uh, at 2 o'clock this, uh, this afternoon. Okay, so yeah, thank you very much.